Hello, my name is Adolfo, and this is Life of Adolfo. Today I'm going to cover the New York Yankees, their pitching, their lineup, their bullpen, prospects, and who's on the field. And then we're going to look at stats. We're going to see what they did before the season, before the lockdown, and what do I think they're going to do after the lockdown. Starting rotation is Garrett Cole. Severino, I have him number two. He was injured. That's a good one, two combo. Montgomery, Tayon, I think he's going to improve next year. And Herman. When it comes to the lineup, I do have LeMahieu, Judge, Stanton, Gallo, Torres, Voigt, Hicks, Sanchez, and Urshela. I think that Glaber Torres will eventually bat too if his average improves. And that will put Judge, Stanton, and Gallo at the 3-4-5. We got to remember, last year when they have Anthony Rizzo, Rizzo was batting second, second, sometimes first, and then Judge, Stanton were following. With the prospects, we do have Anthony Volk, Parasa, and Schmidt. The bullpen, we do have Shaman, Loisega, Brennan, who was injured, and the rest of the team, the rest of the bullpen. When it comes to the field, we do have Gallo in the outfield with Higgs, Judge. In the infield, we do have Urshela, Torres, Lemehu, and Voigt. And the catcher that they decided to keep was Sanchez. Now, when it comes to the infield, uh, some people have Torres at, batting, uh, Torres at second, Lemehu at third, and Urshela at short. You can move them around however you want. You could even move LeMahieu to first if you, you if they acquire someone in the middle infield or at third base. Now we're going to look at their stats before we cover who I think they're going to uh, acquire. And we're going to look at them first, okay? So first we can look at the, at the hitting. Just like I mentioned how the lineup was going to look like. This is the way I have it. They only have one lefty, one switch hitter. Everybody else bats right. Three other hitters could easily hit 40, Judge, Dannon, and Gallo. When it comes to the average, it's not that great. As a combined team, the lineup that we have right here hit 219. As you can see, the strikeouts are 1,088 combined with Joey Gallo leading the team with 213. Now, I know a lot of people like the OVP of Gallo, but he does strike out a lot. His average is pitiful. And I'd rather have a player that gets on base when the other team doesn't want to then when the other team feels like they feel they're better walking that player and when they walk them that means that basically that raises their OVP but that avoids facing that player and even though he has a lot of walks I believe that most of them came from the Texas Rangers where the Rangers only having him and Garcia as power bats so it's easy to avoid that hitter with the Yankees, I think his walks are going to decline. As you can see, Judge only has 75 walks, starting 63, because people, players, teams are forced to pitch to them. And with the combined 219 average, is not that great. Uh, as for the OBP, I don't know how to add it. You got to add sacrifice flies, walks, and hit by pitch. And that's too many details that I couldn't cover it on doing my calculation on the computer. Now, when it comes to the pitching, we do have Cohen Severino, Montgomery, Tejon, Herman, and I added Cortez because we don't know if Tejon is going to be pitching a lot or Severino is going to come back whenever at the beginning of the season. What I do like about Cortez is his strikeout ratio. It's over nine. It's over one per inning or nine per nine innings, 103 Ks in 93 innings. Like I said, I like Jamison Tejon. I think he's going to improve. 140 strikeouts, 144.1 with a 4.3 or 4.30 ERA. And as you can see, the average innings pitch is 113 with uh, 0.23 with all six pitchers. And the ERA is a 0.306. The 3.06 I think is great. Not a lot of teams I have, I believe have a, a under 3.5. Now, I'm going to try to cover right now their standings of last year, and then I'm going to predict where I think they're going to be at next year with the way the team is right now. The Rays were at first place, Yankees and Red Sox eight games behind, and the Blue Jays nine with the Orioles way behind with 110 losses. Now, we're going to look at their at who they should get. And this is who they should get, I think. So first, I'm going to try to cover it. I know a lot of people are saying Correa, 
Chris Bryant because people want the best player out there. A lot of fans want the best player and they're hopeful. If they do get Correa, that means that Torres, I think they might trade Torres or LeMahieu, which I doubt LeMahieu is going to be traded. Torres, if they acquire uh, Chris Bryant, I think Urshela is going to be playing short and once again Torres is going to be traded. Or they, or what they could do is get Correa, move Torres to second, LeMahieu to first, and trade Luke Voigt. Same thing with Chris Bryant. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Why? Because we don't. I don't know how much of the salary cap it is. I don't know what the bargaining agreement is going to raise it up to. And I don't know what's going to happen after this, honestly. But the best player that, if you're trying to mention three players, and we're going to say Correa, uh, Chris Bryant, and Anthony Rizzo, the best chance of acquiring one is Anthony Rizzo. Why? Because he's only one-dimensional. When I say one-dimensional, he's a first baseman only. Easier to acquire someone that has only one position than someone that has multiple because that means other teams are going to try to acquire them. Correa is a shortstop, but that's that's a high-demand uh, position, especially this, on this offseason. So out of all of them, I do think that Anthony Rizzo is the best chance. If they offer him the same contract with the Yankees, in another team and he decides to go to the Yankees that means that he liked the Yankees if not that means that he didn't like his two months with the Yankees now when it comes to Gary Sanchez why do I think they they signed him it's because they're afraid he might leave of course right but with the National League probably getting the DH that gives about I think 16 teams or 16 players an, an employment because most of those teams are going to need a DH. And if, if Sanchez was a free agent, that would have gave one of those teams a chance to get Gary Sanchez. Not as a catcher, but as a DH. With the Yankees, they have to have him as a, D, as a catcher because Gary Stan, I mean Giancarlo Stanton is the DH. Now, do I think the uh, pitching staff trusts Sanchez? Not really. I don't think Cole uh, trusts him because I believe that he didn't even use him in the playoffs. And the uh, wild card, I think it was a wild card game or whatever the case might be, Sanchez didn't play. So Cole doesn't trust him. Severino, I've seen so many balls that Sanchez missed from Severino that I don't even think Severino trusts him. Some of these other pitchers, they probably don't have no choice because the team puts whatever catchers on the, on the back. And that's just the honest truth. So... Do I think that Sanchez be, was a wise move to keep? Uh, if they plan to trade him, it was a wise move. If they plan to keep him as a catcher, he needs to improve because his catching wasn't that great. His average was a 204, 23 home runs, which is good. On um, base for 307, strikeout 121, but he has that pop. He's one of the best catchers hitting wise when it comes to power. Now, do I think they're going to acquire someone, to be honest? Not really. If they do, it's going to be Anthony Rizzo. Pitching staff, do I think they're going to acquire some, someone with a, one of these key players that could be in the rotation? Not really. If they do, it's going to be a fifth starter just in case someone gets injured. The best chance is acquiring someone in the bullpen. Now, another reason I don't think they're going to acquire shortstop is because they do have Volpe and Parasa. I forgot which one was in AAA and hit 280. But if Torres struggles, they could put him in there. If Urshela struggles, they could move Torres to second. They could move LeMahieu to second, to, I mean, uh, third, and put the uh, player at short and put Torres at second. Or they could move Luke Voigt, move LeMahieu to uh, first, Torres to second, and the shortstop of Volpo Parasa. So that's, one of, that's another reason I don't think they're going to sign someone because they have that flexibility in the prospects that could easily come in just in case someone struggles. Another position I think they might try to acquire is center field. Why? Because Aaron Hicks is an injury-prone player. If they don't acquire him at this point, they might try to acquire him afterwards. Um, I forgot who... Uh, I, I, someone was tweeting that they should acquire Lewis Branson because he got cut from the, uh, from the Marlins. He was a top prospect from the Rangers, got traded to Milwaukee. I believe he got traded to Milwaukee, and then he got traded uh, for Christian Yelich to the Marlins. So 
I think a player like that for the minor league deal or major leagues and have much flexibility in the outfield will be good. Not a good average, but he does have some pop when he hits the ball. So with that being said, that's what I think about the Yankees. Who should they acquire? Center field. Out of all the top prospects, I think Rizzo is the most, the wiser uh, contract because it's not a lot. Plus, he already knows the system of the Yankees or the or the team in the dugout. With that being said, hopefully you like my, my review, my stats, and so on. Have a good day, and we'll see how the Yankees do. Thank you.